Breaking news now. Metro police are asking for your help searching for Andrew Liberty. He is 63 years old and walked away from his home on Sunnyvale Drive near Laverne yesterday afternoon and hasn't been seen since. He is said to be diagnosed with dementia, Alzheimer's and PTSD. If you've seen him, call police. Developing news now, a man takes matters into his own hands after his car is stolen and opens fire on suspected thieves. News Channel 5's Dan Kennedy is at Vanderbilt Medical Center now. And Dan, do we know how that victim is doing right now? Yeah, that victim is going to survive his uh, injuries. He's behind me at the hospital, still recovering from that shooting last night. Detectives very eager to speak with him today. Uh, they arrested the other folks who were also inside of that stolen vehicle last night. They were all taken into custody. Again, this is a teenager we we're talking about who was found inside that stolen car. It was about 830 last night when this all began with reports of a stolen car and it ended just moments later, just south of downtown on reports of a shooting. Turns out the person who had their car stolen ended up following his stolen car and the people inside to 4th Avenue South and Lafayette Street. That's where police say he then opened fire on the people inside his stolen car. One of those teenagers inside was hit and taken to the hospital. Again, non life threatening injuries is expected to be OK. No word yet on what other charges the other people in that car could be facing this morning. It's also possible the man who opened fire, the car owner, could also face charges in this case, but uh, police still have some investigating to do. Reporting live this morning from Vanderbilt, Dan Kennedy, News Channel 5. Dan, thank you. And amazingly, a similar story out of Rutherford County. Murfreesboro police arrested Jesse Caldwell yesterday. Officers say he stole a car Friday and the owner chased him into Shelbyville. One of the women who was chasing him shot at Caldwell. He got away but was arrested later in Murfreesboro. The women who chased him and shot at him are now charged with reckless endangerment. An hours long standoff with deputies in Cheatham County ended with a man shooting himself. Investigators say Jerry French's longtime girlfriend called 911 saying that he was assaulting her. The woman was able to get away, but French refused to leave the house. After a three hour standoff, French shot himself in the chest. He was taken to the hospital right now. We're working to get an update on his condition for you and find out whether he'll face any charges. The two teenagers who were shot at their school in Kentucky last week have been laid to rest. Funeral services were held for Bailey Holt and Preston Cope this weekend. The two were shot and killed at Marshall County High School. More than a dozen other students were also shot. Kentucky Governor Matt Bevan declared yesterday a day of prayer in Marshall County. The governor says the state prayed for the victims, their families and the survivors. A man says the new batteries that he put in his smoke alarms just three days ago may have saved his family. Samuel Henderson's home was destroyed yesterday, but his loved ones were able to escape the fire. All, all the kids was upstairs. Yeah, they was upstairs uh, watching TV or whatever, cartoons. By the time we got all of them out in the front yard and called 911, it, it was rough. They have nothing, but my God, they still with us. The fire was on Mexico Drive. The Red Cross is helping the Henderson family find temporary housing. But in the meantime, there's a GoFundMe page to help them buy essentials. We put that information under this story on NewsChannel5.com. And a family's in mourning after the death of a young woman killed in a house fire in the Percy Priest Lake area. This happened at a home on Islandia Court East. The stairwell and an upstairs bedroom were on fire when crews got there. An 18 year old young woman died at the scene. Her mother and a child were taken to the hospital to be checked out. Fire crews are working to figure out what caused the fire. The job of a fire chief is never easy, but this weekend was particularly tough for Hendersonville Fire Chief Scotty Bush. He says a fire started at his friend's home. The woman had worked for the Hendersonville Police Department for decades. She managed to get out, but her husband did not. And we've got a couple of folks that uh, citizens that actually pulled her from the fire. They were actually beating on the doors uh, and actually heard a lady scream and they went around the back of the house and pulled her out. Fire officials are waiting to release the man's name who died. The woman who was injured is in the burn unit at Vanderbilt. A white supremacist group responds to allegations that they left a flyer at a Murfreesboro business. The owner of TC's Pawn and Loan says a flyer from the Vanguard America group was pasted across the front door of her business on Friday. The leader of the group sent us a following response saying, quote, the postering of private businesses and property is strictly forbidden in my organization. This unfortunate happenstance was a mistake from a new member who'd not been informed of this rule yet. This member has been reprimanded and will reimburse and formally apologize to the business. 
Hundreds of college students came together this weekend at MTSU to show off their creative skills. The third annual Hack MT event wrapped up yesterday. Programmers, software developers, and visual designers teamed up to create apps, games, and gadgets. The first place prize went to a team that created Lawn Bots, which is a system related to lawn care. 27 teams started the three-day event, 18 finished. Students came from Tennessee Tech, TSU, Belmont, University of Tennessee Chattanooga, and University of Alabama Huntsville.